Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be looking at how to model uh, content for your page, for a page, inside Prismic as a CMS. So the example that we will, we will be looking at is the example where a designer sent you a design for a page that you need to implement, and then you need to figure out how to implement it in your code and also how to model it in the CMS for like a content team or a marketing team to be able to change the content uh, from there. So the example that we will be looking at is this one. It's some kind of landing page for a juice company called Foster Juice. And it's pretty simple. It has uh, like four, four sections. Um, the first thing that I do when I look at a page like this one is try to figure out what are the different sections in this page. Each one will correspond to components in my code. So this is what I did. So this is what I did here. I have my different sections. So I have one, two, three, and four different sections. So I will be calling them sections, but basically they are macro components. They are components in my code and they are slices in my uh, CMS. Um, each of these sections, the first thing also that I will be doing before jumping to the implementation is try to figure out how they work and how they can evolve. So for instance, for this one, it looks like it always will have like it will always have one title, one paragraph, and one button. But basically, when I asked my designers, they told me that we can actually have two buttons, and I want to give the content team the ability to choose the color of the button. They need to choose if they can if they want to have it in the primary or secondary color, so blue or white here for us. It's something that I need to take into consideration when I'm doing my implementation in my code and in my CMS. I need to anticipate all of these things. So when I have all of this info in mind, I can start doing two things. Implementing each of these micro components in my code and also modeling them in my CMS. So we won't be looking at the first thing, the uh, implementing it in your code. I will be, looking, I will be linking my uh, Nox project to this video so you can have a look there. And we'll be looking at the second part, like setting up the CMS to be able to like model all of these different sections. Okay, so let's look at uh, where you get when you sign up to Prismic, when you open a new repository to Prismic. So it looks like this. This is normally the place where I can create new content, new pages, um, so for, for each page of my website. And if I wanna create this new page, the first thing that Prismic will ask me to do is to create the custom type, so the modeling of a page. So I have two choices. I can either create a single type or a repeatable type. Single type is something that you're going to use for like a template that's going to be used only once. For instance, a template for a pricing page will be used only once. Most probably you will have only one pricing page. And the repeatable type is a template that you want to use many times and you want to base many uh, different pages on this, pa on this type. So for instance, for a blog post or for like generic pages of my website, I'm going most probably to use a repeatable type. So I'm gonna create a page custom type that is repeatable. And this is where I arrive. So basically it's completely empty. It's up to me to drag and drop fields to build uh, my template. So a best practice is to always start your custom type with a UID field. So it's the unique identifier of the page. So define UID here as a placeholder and something that's going to be uh, useful to identify the page for you to call it in your when you when you're um, requesting the Prismic API, but also it's also good for for instance uh, for marketing purposes to be able to define the URL um, of this page, and then I'm going to drag and drop also a title field because I want to have a title for this page, so enter title here and I want it to be H1. So this could be the title of your page, but it also could be like just a title to identify the page and tell also the rest of the marketing team, what is this page? Is it a landing page for juice or is it for your coffee or something? Okay. And then you have two choices. Either you go through uh, this page and you add like each field one after the other. So a title field, a paragraph field, or you create what we call slices, sections. So instead of listing the fields one after the other, you group fields into sections 
that will be corresponding to components. And these sections are grouped. And now there are some kind of building blocks for your team to be able to build different pages based on these different slices. They can reorder them in the way they want. They can choose to use them in some pages and not use them in other pages. So this is what we're going to do now. It's something that will be like giving more flexibility to our team. So now that we have that they have these different components, they can actually build like 10 different pages based on like using these building blocks, not be forced to follow this order. So we're going to be looking at this first slice. And then I'll show, uh, I'll share with you the the, the whole uh, custom type so that you can also reuse it in your own project or have it tested on your on your site. So let's look at this one. So I called it hero section. So let's create a hero section. I'm going to activate the slice zone. I have no slice for now, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to call it hero section. It's basically a hero with possibly many buttons and for the image I'm going to choose this one and the buttons I want them to show as a grid because they're going to be one uh, next to the other. I'm going to save and what I get is an empty slice basically with a non-repeatable zone and a repeatable zone. It's something that you need to figure out then now what, what do you put in the non-repeatable zone and what do you put in the repeatable zone. If I look at this slice, let's look if I look at this slice, so the hero section, I have a title and a paragraph that are non-repeatable, that just appear once. But I just learned that I can have buttons that are repeatable. I can have more than one. So in the non-repeatable zone, I will put this. And in the repeatable zone, I will put all the fields related to this, to the button. So in the non-repeatable zone, I need a title. I also need a paragraph. So I'm going to put a rich text field, which I'm going to call paragraph. Uh, enter the text here. I only want to have paragraphs. And this is only the only thing that I need in the non repeatable zone. In the repeatable zone, I need to create my button. So for a button, I need a label and a link. And here, I will also need a select field to decide which color I want to give to my buttons, the primary or the secondary. OK, so let's uh, have a look. So for the for the button label, I will put a key text. So I will call it button label. And I also need a link. So I'm going to take add a link field here under the button label. So button link. I'm going to say that I need to enter a uh, URL here. And the last thing is that I need a, a select field to be able to select to define which color I want for my button. So let's get the select field. It's here. I'm going to put it here. So color and define color. And I have primary color or secondary color. I want the first value to be the default one. And that's it. Now I built my slice for the hero section. Something cool that you can do, let's say that you created a hero section that you're going to use in other uh, custom types, like in your pricing page custom type, you can always save it. It's added to your slice library. So now let's say that I want to add a new slice in another custom type. You can either create it from scratch or you have it here, like I have my hero section here. This is my whole slice library, so I have many, but you can build your own. And we also provide you with predefined slices, the ones that we see most of people using a lot. So I'm going to save. I'm not going to go through all of the different slices that are used here, but basically you can see that if for this section, for instance, so let's look at it from here, everything is non-repeatable, so we'll have an image field, a title field, a paragraph field, two items to handle the button as non-repeatable. So this is pretty straightforward once you understand this idea of having some items that are repeatable, some items that are not repeatable. Same here, everything is non-repeatable. This is only one image. 
So everything here will be non repeatable just need to drag and drop the right fields. And here, the last one, you will have the title and the paragraph being non repeatable and then you need to put in your repeatable zone at least an image field, a title field, a paragraph field and something to handle the bottom, so a label and a URL. So all of these four fields, five fields will be in the repeatable zone. So let's look at what, like, how my uh, repo will look like once I finish all of this. So this is a finished repo. You can see that from one custom type, a set of slices, I built like six, uh, five different pages. So if I look at my custom type, I have only one. You can see that I still have my UID, my title here, and now I created even more than what was asked for me because I know that maybe my team will, be, will need more. I created something like seven different slices. I have my hero section here, but if we look at the last one that I, I was looking at, the features section, I have in the non-repeatable zone, a title field and a paragraph field to handle the title and the big paragraph. And then in the repeatable zone, I put an image field, a head field, a description field, and two items to handle the buttons for this. Okay, I hope this is clear to you. Um, one last thing that I want to show you is how your content team will be creating content based on these slices created by you. So, as I said, these are all pages that are all created based on your one custom type. So if I look at this one, my content team is starting the page with UID, a title for the page, and now they have this set of different blocks that they can use and fill with content to build their page. So uh, here they created a call to action first and then they put the hero before. So let's change this. I want now to have the hero in front so I want the hero section. I'm going to save. And I'm going to be able to preview. So now I have my page that starts with my hero section. And after that, I have my call to action, exactly the same as the one that my designers asked for. And then I have this graphic section, exactly this one. And you can see that if at some point I want to change things, like now my team wants to add another button as they asked for, asked for. I can put like a button that links to um, fosterjuice.com. I gonna put like see more as a label and the, and the color I want secondary this time. I just can save and it's gonna be automatically reloading my preview. And now I have this ability thanks to the repeatable zone to add more than one button. I can also change the order my slices were created. So now if I want to put the call to action after this graphic section, I can have it before I just save. And thanks to this slices structure that correspond to components, it basically like moving components. So now I have this graphic section before my call to action. So I hope you can see how slices work. You can see how they can be exactly like components or sections of your page and give more flexibility to your content team. The whole uh, thing here is to figure out what are the sections of your page, what should be one slice, and what should in each slice go into the repeatable zone and go into the non-repeatable zone. If you have questions related to this, or you have a design and you're not sure how to model it, feel free to ping us through this chat button here. You can send us your model and we can help you with figuring out how the slices work and how they could work for your, for your project. I hope this was helpful to you and uh, feel free to watch other videos on how Prismic works. Thanks.